I was born on the Klamath River, the range. I paddled these canoes since I was big enough to paddle. And uh, our people were the boat builders. We had the redwood trees, so we uh, made good use of the boats. So the Creator gave us the redwood, and the redwood was our sacred tree because it gave us a, a way to travel on the river. The river, Klamath River, was our highway, and uh, we traveled that river. And uh, also, the redwood tree was <coughs> provided us lumber for uh, houses, our, our yeah, houses that we lived in. And uh, uh, I start building these boats, help my brothers. And uh, way back, uh, when I was going to school in Sherman, Riverside, one summer I come home early and he said, we gotta go build a boat. So we loaded up our, our uh, tent and all our food to eat. And we, I stayed down there 10 days. We built a big boat. It was, uh, at that time, they were building inboard motor boats and uh, this boat was 27, 28 foot long and about six foot wide and uh, it was quite a chore to and the first cut I made I did all the cross cutting the tree was 11 foot through and I was pulling on that saw from daylight till dark and uh, I was only about maybe 16, 17, must be about 17 years old. And uh, then I helped later on uh, building these boats and it got kind of popular when they, people began to get interested in our culture. And uh, so they started building these boats and I helped build some of these, but I've been a, always busy. I've been a contract logger for about 35 years. I never had time to build these boats. I was always busy monkey wrenching equipment or doing something. And uh, so since I've been retired, I, I uh, decided to want to build a boat. But uh, finding a log to build a boat is almost impossible. And uh, uh, Park has the Redwood National Park has oh, most of our redwood trees, which was left wasn't cut by the uh, big timber companies, and uh, they promised that we could maybe have logs that log tree that fall on the ground, maybe fall across the road or or and uh, or highway or whatever, and they. We might be getting some logs from them that way. This here is a half a log. This boat is a half a log, and it's a second growth tree. Second growth means that the old growth was in the trees that was here when European come in this country. The second growth is a tree that grew from uh, cutting the old growth. So evidently this tree was one of the first one they cut, a tree that they cut in uh, Arcata, and then the uh, the young trees will grow off the stumps and uh, sometimes you have uh, six, seven trees growing off the same stump and we call them family trees because they're all in, like one family and uh, so anyway, that's where we got this. We got this log from a fellow that had a little sawmill. He charged us for what he thought he'd get in boards off of the, that half a log. So it's quite expensive, and uh, and uh, so I brought it up here to Hoopa and start working on it.
and I had a pretty good idea what I wanted. wanted. And in the building boats, you have uh, some idea in your head, your vision, and uh, you, vis you, you can picture the boat that, uh, that's finished. And, then, and this is pretty close to what, what I had, what I wanted. What, what it, it, uh, it, it uh, floats up high and uh, it's easy to turn, it travels good. And, uh, and in the olden days when we used to travel up and down the river, the boat maker, the boat builder, or carver, or whatever you want to call him, his boats, uh, the boats that were, that could travel along the river with, uh, with, with, uh, uh, let's see, I'll go back, you know, a little bit. Some boats, the way they're built, they're hard to make it come, go up the river. You can go downstream, just think of a log, try to push a log upstream. So the way you build the bottom of the boat uh, has the influence on how the boat travels. So the boat miller that could make a good traveling boat on the river, his boat was in great demand. And, uh, and I can see why, because I paddled that river many times. I know how hard work it is to paddle 30 miles up the river, especially in winter when the river's high, it's pretty swift, and uh, summertime we can pull these boats over the riffle, we get on the side, and along the side there's a handhold right underneath here, and you just grab, put your fingers in there and you can just pull it. Sometimes you get two, two, three guys pulling it, and then just, you can come pull it over that shallow riffle left there, no problem. And uh, another thing we used to do is tie a rope like way this is tied. And then you tie it back a little bit and you pull it long and then the front end, the guy that's steering on the back keeps the front end pointed out toward the middle of the river. You don't want it to come close to shore because you get hung up along the shore. So it'll run long out there just as fast as you can walk. And I pulled on them boats many times with, a lot of times with, Big load of, uh, we used to commercial fish down mouth of the river. We'd go down to a camp for a month. We'd have our tents and fish nets and all our cooking gear. Plus we'd buy enough groceries to last the following winter. Sugar, uh, flour, and all other lots of stuff. And, and that was quite a chore coming up the river with a big boat, a big load, and, and I've done, done that a few times, not too many. Of course, I was about, oh, 12, 13 years old when they quit this fishing down there. They stopped the commercial fishing, and then they didn't start till after we, just recently. Um, but anyway, going back to the boat, and. Uh, the traditional way in prehistoric time was they burned. They burned a boat, they put fire. Wherever you want to take a wood out, you, you set fire to it. And you control the fire. You get just enough fire to, that you don't want too much fire and get too much wood out. So you have to be real careful. And then, you, and then they scrape with uh, elk horn or or animal bones, or even stones, and they scrape, and they just keep keep it was uh, a long. They took a long time doing it, but uh, they were patient, and they and uh, so this is the type of boat that that uh, was made. This is, I like the way you can step right in the boat. Some boats, you, you have to step in the water before you get in the boat. This one here, you, uh, you can just step from here right into the boat. Same way if you hit a riffle, 
you cross the river, you got fast water, and your boat is quite a ways out into that swift water before it's way, the water has to be way back in here before it hits it. That way, you don't, it don't, uh, if you've got a boat that's too, too square in the front, when you hit a fast water, it'll turn your boat around, and then you got to be, you got to have the boat angle just right for it not to do that, and this makes it a lot easier. And uh, it rides a, we paddled down the river here the other day, and it, and we hit some rough water, and this boat took that rough water pretty good. I could, I, I was steering the boat. My grandson was in the front. He was, I could see him come way up and then down again, and uh, and the water splashing out. So and so I'm pretty happy with the way it handles. And uh, yeah, we have we have uh, body parts of the boat like a human. Here we got up here the nose. This is the nose. And then these lines here represent the the breasts, your ribs, or and of course this is the most important one of the boat. This is the heart. The heart is the is the has the that's the life of the boat. And then back there is the kidneys. I I always call it footrest, or and then the seat. Seat. And our people call the fellow that paddles back there, the Chukwech. Chukwech, he's the one who is steering the boat. Poi on Cho is a fellow that paddled up here. Wogi on his middle one. And, uh, and, and, uh, we call this Hego paddle. And, uh, a lot of our, language pertains to our, our, us traveling on the river and that part of the language, nobody does it anymore and uh, uh, so that, that part of our language is kind of lost. Like this water right here is the shallow water right at Skutrugit. That's the deep water out there, Knutlur, Knutlur. And then gravel bars, Pachek, San Chaskas, Chaskas. So we got, and uh, cross the river, he call is over there. You know, you're so, down over where I was where the river is a lot, lot bigger than this. And, uh, and uh, so, anyway, a lot of our language is, is uh, not being used on account of not, not, uh, we don't, and I intend to maybe try to teach our younger people how to how to uh, maneuver these boats. You get in a place like that place right there, it's pretty tricky to get down in there. See, that water is going right into that rock over in there. So you have to kind of, you've got to be pretty careful. The, the current will just slam you right against the rock. So you have to maneuver in there pretty good. If the, wa if the water is a little bit deeper, you can go right straight down, but right now it, uh, I could make it through there, alone. I'd get down there and then I'd just push my way down. And then a lot of times if you was, if you was, uh, uh, you could get out and push it down through there if you don't want to go through there, you know, that's kind of a bad place there. The other one up there is not too bad where we was. What about, what's the normal, because it's low water right now, right? What's the normal height of the water? Normal. Well, this is, you know, since the, the dams were put in and the, the water's going down south, the river is, is, not, is not like it used to be. We just had more water. And uh, during our ceremony, the deerskin dance, they let out water for the dancers so it'd come up quite a ways. The water probably was way up in here someplace. And uh, uh, so, and the normal, I don't know what the, what, uh, 
but it's low right now. Yeah, it's low now, but you can see, you can see how we're, it was last winter. We didn't have much water last winter. And uh, during that flood, that big flood, it was way up in there someplace. Yeah, uh, you'd go see it went clear up the bank up in there, so that we'd be down pretty low down here. But that's a pretty good indication of that that clean where there's nothing growing where the river. And it stayed probably in there quite a bit. During the spring months it stayed in that well that's why it's so clean. Although the river was higher for maybe just short length of time that you did. Um, can you talk a little bit about the fish kill? What happened with the fish this year because of the water? Well, that was last year we had the fish kill and <clears throat> we had unusually low water. I come up a couple times in a in the uh, a jet boat and we we couldn't make it to Johnson's. That's lower, about halfway down. It was too shallow. And uh, the river, the Klamath River is, is this is just a tributary of the, to the Klamath River. And I imagine some of that, them places that had water, but like this here, and, uh, and are, are lower. And, uh, and then, uh, I guess what happened was uh, some of them pools, you know, the deep pools, like this one up in there where we was at, maybe over in there. The salmon, I guess, got, the river got hot and then uh, they stay in them pools and then I guess when they get close together, they get, they get uh, that disease spread on them. And, and, uh, and uh, I don't know what they killed, 30, 33, 34,000 salmon. They were just all over. It's just uh, something that I never seen, I, I never heard of in my lifetime. And, and I'm 84 years old. And the people that, that was, that I could remember the older, they were older like me. And that, they never did mention any time we ever had fish kill like we had and uh, of course we didn't have dams them deer, deers uh, them days we didn't have uh, farmers polluting the river the river is I think what they say is the third most polluted river in the, in the United States and that's sad for me because I used to I, my whole life has been on the river, and uh, to see something like that, it's it's real sad. Uh, yeah. Uh, Are there a lot of um, a lot of people building boats these days? Not too many, not too many, not too many. Lots of people that like to build boats, but one thing, the log is hard to get. I guess if there's lots of logs available, there would, there would be a lot of people, you know, building boats. And uh, it's quite a work, it's, it's, it's just a lot of work. How long did this one take you to make? Oh, I worked on it since, uh, let's see, about a year and a half, I guess, something like that. But I never work hard on it. I don't work hard. I can't work hard anymore like I used to. My knees, I get, you have to get down there your knees. And I got uh, knee pads and still that don't help. And, uh, and uh, uh, but I, I work on it and then I, then I go back to work on it again. About how much but are the logs running then? How much? Uh, the price? Yeah. 
This one costs us uh, between pretty close to 5,000, 500, somewhere around in there. Plus we had to haul it, you know. My, uh, lucky I had my son-in-law, had a, got a truck and we went down, he hauled it for me. Did some of the, your um, young sons or, or grandsons or nephews come and help you work on it? Well, I get them to help, but I, I, I wanted to do this myself, you know. We loan that boat sticks up in the air you know, the front. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, this is one pattern here.
used this a lot when I was young. Tied it. We leave sometime two o'clock in the morning. Paddle down to my toward the mouth of the river, and then paddle back up the river. Camp along the river, or sometimes we have friends live along the river. We stay winter time. It's not summertime. You can camp any place. Lots of good clean water coming out of the side of the off the mountain. Now they do so much spraying that it's it's not even safe to drink the water. Anymore. Or somebody might be living up above someplace and have their garbage going into the creek. It's not like it was. It was, a, it was a, now this this where we're at right now is football. It's football. This river on the climate is a lot bigger than this. But, uh, This is uh, people our country. They get good country in here. They used to own a lot more than this. Than they like all other tribes, their their reservation shrunk down to. So we're going to go back downstream now. See if you look downstream or here. Do you see this white foam? Float down here. If you see going down the river, that's what you follow. The foam, of course, that's where the curb is. Back there is backwater, so you don't want to get in there if you're going down the river. The water, the same way on this side, sometimes you have backwater. There's a big eddy here, water coming back this way. But right here, right where this foam is, we're drifting down, we're not paddling. A lot of oh, that's a lot of tricks in the river. You take advantage of the current. You can cross rivers by angling the, the boat at a certain angle and take you right over. Mm. And then uh, maybe you catch another eddy over the other side and then catch that eddy, swing you around. And uh, so after you know the river, you know where you can. You can cross with just a minimum amount of paddling, although the current's pretty swift. Now this, the, the foam is going way over in there, but we're still, we're still right here yet. But right in here, the water is, is coming back. And over there, the water's coming back that way. Usually we have two paddles, or several paddles. See, this one's longer than the other one. And uh, they use these long paddles for pulling, like on going upstream. And they use the, 
<laughs> that wider paddle for deep water crossing the river or going downstream. See, I can, I can, when I get right depth, I can go down in here. Pull that boat moving. Then I steer, see, I have to, every time I paddle like this, I have to steer. I'm going to let it go across over in that eddy.